Hey guys, you know Pro here. Uh, as you may have noticed, I have been away from the game for a little bit, took a bit of a break, you know, wasn't sure what was happening with the management and everything. But uh, things look, seem to be looking up and I've decided to come back. Uh, today I'm going to be playing a couple of live games on the ranked ladder. So mainly this season I have been using Kalazar to rank up. Really enjoy that kind of control play style, and I have got to about 2,100 points so far. Um, obviously not that much, but I haven't been playing for most of the season. So this is the first live games I have done on my YouTube channel. So hopefully we do all right. So against the Grant, just waiting for it to load. And this looks like a, a pretty easy mulligan here. So we have a decent hand, probably going to just curve out with two drops here. Our hand does work a little bit against itself, with a lot of early drops and then a lot of late game drops. Um, but against a fellow Inferno deck, I think I probably want to get on the board early. And I think there's nothing really with Retaliation to be blocked with, so I'll play the Hatching Breeder first. Okay, so he makes a interesting choice to block there. Does leave him open a firebolt, but we'll have to spend our mana a bit inefficiently. Um, there are a couple of options here. One thing I'm even thinking about is just attacking and playing a hatching breeder in front, which I actually think might be best because then the next time we can just play a succubus and attack. Though magma burst. Yeah, I'm fine with Magnaburst. I think I'm just going to play Hatching Breeder in front. And increase magic. So yeah, obviously like the reason you wouldn't normally play that there is to play around Firebolt, but I'd rather play this turn, play a Succubus, and then Firebolt. So that was what we were opening up to. We still have the two one ones, and I feel like this matchup is more about getting onto the board early. And we're spending our mana really well here. Uh, and Garant won't have too many comeback mechanics himself. So we are running a little bit short on the cards because of that, but uh, we still have the board control. Hopefully not something too big here. Garant's Purge, yeah, that can be a bit of a problem. I'm guessing he'll get this. Okay, he chose the time jump. Uh, if I was him, maybe he would have gone for the, the spell stealer because I feel like it's probably just the best card. Um, in the deck, but obviously there's a couple of different ways you could play it. I'm just going to spread these out here, I think, and then just play a maniac. Keep increasing. Um, doesn't really matter here. So I mean, there's not a lot of AOE you can have here. Um, some, but I, th I think we're in an okay position. We should be able to get in full on turn six, and we have Akrath. So if anything gets too wrong, though, it would be nice to have you know a Soul Reaver or an Alone in the Dark. So yeah, I have been away for a while. Um, I think I still got most of my skill left. Um, but really loving the way the game's starting to look again um, now that management's transferred over, um, especially with the Chinese drafts, Chinese server having the draft mode enabled, um, something a lot of players have been asking for a very long time. Hmm, now I have a bit of an interesting decision. I'm very tempted just to draw a card here. I know it seems a bit, a bit early to be drawing a card. Um, maybe I can aim an Akrath Wrath. Is a, I think I'm definitely going to be attacking with the succubus, but I can definitely attack here. Um, though that may, you know, signal what I have a bit too much if I choose not to use it. Uh, with Enthor next turn, we're going to have time to cast anything but a spell stealer um, with our, in regards to our requirements. So. But I mean, what do I really want to draw here? Do I just want to draw a creature? Maybe that's fine. Uh, there's a lot of three might creatures though. I think I want to draw a card still. Okay. Um, 
think I'm gonna go ahead and just use this. Okay. Interesting hand here. Um, so we're gonna be discarding either way. There's not a lot of point taking the moon fix, probably. I mean, we know he has no way to kill it, so it is an option. But himself, he's getting a bit low on cards too. Um, probably the Void Arbiter is the best option because we have enough tools to kind of make the Moon in a Phoenix a little bit ineffective. Probably going to take the Void Arbiter here. Yeah, and that actually does give us some magic channel, which is always nice. Put this here. Now the question is uh, do we attack here? And I say we probably do. Um, we want to keep the demon count low, and I mean, he's probably going to play into this anyway because he wants to get the discard. So, interesting decision. Yeah. Oh, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, that discard did hurt us a bit, but we still have in Thor ready. Um, still can't draw any more cards. Yeah. That does suck a little bit. Well. We saw his hand, he has one more Maniac Taskmaster and a hidden card. So if we enthrall, we can probably just bring the enthrall back here. He only has one card left in his graveyard. So probably enthralling this. I mean, we could enthrall this. That's the only other option I'm thinking about. Um, but with only one card in the graveyard, there's probably no need to. Since it'll just go back to him when it dies anyway. So yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and do this. Um, it's kind of unlikely to do a Firebolt. Probably just attack here again. Yeah. And we're going to start increasing our might. So, I mean, this Void Arbiter is hurting us, but it's probably hurting him even more. Um, even the Night of the Rising Moon won't work for him. Our hand's very reactive, unfortunately. Okay, so. It did have an Akrath's Wrath. That will allow us to start drawing cards again. Um, and his graveyard, three cards still. Okay, pretty much from now on, I feel like I want to be drawing a card every turn. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to do anything against the Moon Phoenix, but we're definitely playing this anyway. Um, now the question remains: I really don't want to play Soul Reaver on this. Um, we can kind of get a quarter with the Fork Firebolt or something else. The question is: Do I just play the Hellfire Bloater? Um, and I feel like. Uh, we're being 16 health, I'm pretty comfortable to try and maybe even get a bit more value uh, out of the bloater. Could be incorrect. Is there merit to bring him back in his hand to stop him getting the Great Hunt? Another four cards. Um, with one Maniac Taskmaster. So maybe he can't, maybe it's worth doing. Maybe it's worth, I think I want to deny the, this thing from happening. Well, I mean, yeah, that's probably the best idea. How many cards in the graveyard? Four cards in the graveyard. So it's kind of a spot where Moon Phoenix can be really, really strong. Um, okay, interesting. He would choose to play it there. Okay, it's fine. Plenty left. Yeah, Moon Phoenix really can win the game for you straight out if both players are low on cards and no way of interacting with it. Okay, I think that was the smart choice for him to play this here. So here's what I'm. My main considerations at the moment. Uh, to play, move this up and then play Magma Burst, targeting uh, this and this. Uh, actually, is there any way we can trigger the Great Hunt? Maybe that's could be worth it. Um, draw a card. Doesn't look likely. Uh, well, not not in a way that we would want to do it. Uh, we could we could choose to just not draw a card and increase our mind instead. That is an option. Certainly an option. Maybe we do want to do that.
Yeah. I think I just want to make the solo play here. Taking these two out, and we'll just draw a card. Okay. No reason to get fancy there. Um, in in that case, anyway, we're just basically cycling the firebolt, really. But we're very unfortunate that he had the golden horseshoe there. That's going to refill his hand quite a lot. But we do have the tempo, and uh, we're going to have a great hunt again next turn. So that does give us a lot of options. Hopefully he discards the fireball if he uses that one. Okay, he's not even going for it. Uh, interesting choice here. We could push for damage, but I think we're just going to draw a card first. Across Wrath. Uh, I just don't feel like it's necessary at the moment. Um, some cards, seven cards in graveyard, so we're not going to be lasting the Phoenix. Most likely. I think we want to s s start off fireballing here. Um, yeah, and I, I don't want to waste it alone in the dark on just killing this when it's really just there to soak up damage. Yeah. I can think about fireballing that, but I can't think of anything that does 3 damage, doesn't do 4. So let's just get rid of a car from the graveyard. And I think I'm happy to just delete it as that. We have the Akras Wrath, and yeah. If he overcommits to the board, then we have the Wrath, and we can just uh, be up quite a few cards. Definitely not the clearest way to play this game. There's been a lot of different options. The two alone in the dark should do us a lot of work once we clear the board. And we're basically just looking for our big effects. We still haven't found a spell stealer. Once we find a spell stealer, we should be fine. Still no soul reavers in the yard, unfortunately. So if he plays one more creature here, I'm definitely wrathing, I think. If he doesn't, then we have a bit of a decision to make. He is starting to beat it down, so we're going to have to start worrying about blocking those phoenix hits. But at the moment, I feel pretty comfortable. Okay. Standard decision here. Okay, so he chooses not to play another creature. I probably still gonna wrath here, though. Uh, maybe there's some merit into alone in the dark. Maybe that's actually what we want to do. So what I'm thinking about currently um, is probably playing something like the Hellfire Bloater, trading off to kill the Phoenix, Firebolt for the alone in the dark kill. Which has plenty of mana. So I'm gonna just draw a card first. Does that change anything? Um, it basically just means that we can save a fireball. We can use this instead of. It basically means we can save. Do we want to save a fireball? Yeah, there's basically no reason to use this over the Hellfire Boiler. So I think I'm gonna go ahead with that play. And. Yeah, that was, that was pretty clearly the best play in my mind. Um, lethal damage presented on the boards. Doesn't have to worry about um, time jumps because he didn't purge them away. But we have a board clear still. Uh, he has to find a way to block both lanes quite a decent amount. Okay, so uh, this is just just lethal here. Four. Let me discard a card and deal two damage and attack for the win. So guys, it was my first go back. Probably very rusty at this and at the game, so please bear with me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I plan to do more as I am really enjoying the game again. Um, and it, it, the meta seems quite fresh. I've also a bunch of different decks. I have heard of Inferno is a bit of a problem, uh, but I'm still versing on lots of different decks. So guys, leave lots of comments below so what I can do better, what you liked, and what you would like to see next time. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm Unipro.